So in this lecture, we're going to talk about point-to-point -point communication in MPI.jl. Um, point-to-point -point communication is exactly what it sounds like. So we're going to explicitly send a message from one processor to another, and we're going to be explicit about you know, the, the, the source of the send and the, the destination of the receive. Again, the best way to illustrate this is with some examples in code. So here's a, an example of a send receive pair. Uh, all of the examples that I'm gonna show here, we'll kind of start with this initial syntax where we're going to import the MPI module, start, initialize the job, and then define variables, com rank, and size. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a struct called point that has two fields, X and Y, and then we're going to, on each processor, populate or create a point instantiate a point where the values of x and y will just be the rank. So on processor 0, this will be a point 0, 0. On processor 1, this will be a point 1, 1, etc. So then if the rank is equal to 0, we're going to send the point to the rank 1 processor. If the rank is greater than 0, we're going to receive the point from the processor before it, right? So if, if rank is equal to one, rank minus one will be zero. So this will be listening for a message from rank zero, and it will be received and stored in or created a new value called data. Additionally, on those processors, we're going to send to the, to the next processor, right? So um, if this is rank one, we'll be sending to rank two. If it's rank two, we'll be sending to rank three, except, and that's what this module of size takes care of, except in the case where rank plus one is equal to size, so then you have size modulo size, so that will evaluate to zero. So in that case, you will, you know, on the last processor, the, the size minus one processor, <clears throat> you will send, you'll be sending the message back to the rank zero processor, which we're going to receive here. So on the rank zero processor, we're, we're listening for a message coming from the size minus one rank. <clears throat> so again, I think the best way to see this is to, to see it and illustrate it in code. So, so if we save this in a file, send receive one dot jl, and we run this from the command line, uh, then you, you'll see that you get this kind of output, right? So we can't control the order that it prints to the screen but we, we can understand that the correct thing is happening because uh, what we expect is on the rank one to be receiving the point from rank zero. And we defined the point on rank zero uh, initialized as the fields from the rank, right? So in this case, point zero zero, we know that that came from rank zero. Likewise, point one one came from rank one and is received at rank two. And then finally, uh, you know, on rank zero, we receive from the last processor, which in this case is two, uh, rank two. So, you know, we can run this again on say four processors. And again, we get the expected result. So moving on to the capital S send and receive, and you notice the receive as an exclamation point. Uh, that's because in this case, we're gonna be re receiving into buffers, uh, you know, already allocated memory. So what we'll do is the, the initial part of the code is the same, defining com rank and size. And then we're gonna define a, on each processor a send buffer and a receive buffer that are just initially empty arrays of length 10. The send buffer we're going to fill with, uh, the, rank, with the rank of each processor. So again, this is gonna be like a vector of length 10 and on rank zero, it will be all zeros. On rank one, it will be all ones. On rank two, it will be all twos. Etc. Uh, the receive buffer will leave as an empty rank and we'll just receive into that. And you notice the, the exclamation point on the receive command. Uh, you know, in Julia, the convention is if you're receiving something in place uh, into memory that's already defined, then we use the exclamation point operator. So uh, in this case, again, if we're on rank zero, we're going to send this array to rank one. And if we're on uh, a rank greater than zero, we're going to receive from the rank before it uh, and send to the rank after it, except for the last rank, which will send back to the zero and receive it there. 
So it really, the only the difference here is that the the memory is defined for the receive buffer. So we're, we're receiving uh, into already allocated memory. And then so if we print that to the screen, uh, you'll see the result here. So if we save this into a file, send receive two, and we run it again, uh, we know that these come. You know, we get the expected result. We know that these come from uh, the ranks defined by what they're filled as, right? So this this array came from the rank zero because it's filled with zeros and it was received on rank one. Uh, likewise for two and three. And again, we can run this on say four processors. and we get the expected result. Now, there, there was this last line here, MPI barrier, which hasn't been discussed, and it's actually not really uh, probably needed if, for these send and receive commands. This just, this just ensures that all the send and receives uh, have finished communicating at the time the program exits. However, these send and receives here are defined as blocking send and receives, meaning the program will not actually advance until confirmation of the send has occurred and confirmation of the receive has occurred. So for example, in this code block here, uh, on the ranks greater than zero, um, the, the, it will never send the message uh, until this has been received, which is not necessarily something you have to do, right? This could, this, this could be sent, it's independent of this receive, right? So, because we're not, uh, this is being sent to a different processor uh, then this one is listening for to receive the message, right? So uh, there's no reason that the code necessarily needs to wait on this line until it's completed for this line to run. Uh, but but the way this is written, that is the case. These are defined as blocking send and receives. So so there there are non-blocking versions of send and receive. Um, they have the I in front of them. Again, initial code is the same uh, all the way. Uh, well, it, essentially all of this code is the same. We've just replaced the I send, uh, the send with I send, and receive with I receive. Other than that, all the syntax is the same. And this will be non-blocking. So this, this will actually uh, not wait for this uh, receive to be completed before this send is 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 done and uh there's some return status codes here that you can check and in fact that's what we want to do at the end we want to wait until all statuses have been uh you know basically all statuses have been received so that all send and receive commands have been issued before we print to the screen and and then in this case if we save this to a file i send i received al and we run it and you know the results are no different than before However, again, this it'll it'll you know should run just a slightly faster because th this line is not waiting for the previous line to have received a, a successful status message before continuing. So that's just an overview of the point-to-point -point or send and receive commands in in Julia.